In case you've been living under a flame trench, last week SpaceX made serious waves by launching the fifth flight of Starship. And get this, they actually caught the booster. Yep, the very first super heavy booster caught mid-landing. But there's a lot more happening down in Starbase than just launching and catching rockets. As always, SpaceX has its sights set forward, prepping for the next launch, stacking new hardware, and advancing work on Pad B. So, let's rewind a bit. Just before Flight 5, SpaceX rolled Booster 14 out from Massey's outpost and back to Mega Bay 1. This one had its own round of cryoproof tests and is probably next in line to be fitted with engines. Now, assuming there are no other boosters getting skipped or reused, Booster 14 will likely be the star of Starship's seventh flight, marking a huge milestone as we look forward to Starship version 2, Block 2, as some call it. We're talking about a true next-gen Starship. Also hanging out at the Massey Outpost was Test Tank 16, a test article for the aft section of the new version of Starship. After testing wrapped up, it was rolled over to the Rocket Garden, probably for display before it gets scrapped, since it has now served its purpose. Have you hit the like button yet? Help us boost the YouTube algorithm by giving us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out. Many thanks for your amazing support. Now let's talk about the true hero of the week, Booster 12. There was a lot of speculation about what SpaceX would actually do with it once it landed. Would they need to use a transport stand? Would it require guiding pins to safely nest it back into the launch mount? Well, true to SpaceX style, they went with the brute forces option, skipping the guiding pins and even the stabilizing chopsticks to set it right back onto the mount. They extended the booster quick disconnect arm and hooked it up. Now, it didn't look like they did any tanking or detanking, but it could have been hooked up just for data recovery from the vehicle. A day later, teams removed the flight termination system charges from the booster and transported it back to the production site. That's when things got exciting. Everyone got an up-close look at the first ever recovered Super Heavy booster. Let's be real, it wasn't exactly flawless. The entry phase left a little damage here and there, with some discoloration at the top and some singeing on one side from the flip-back maneuver after stage separation. If you look close, you'll notice some differences from Falcon 9 landing. No soot for one, methane burns way cleaner than Falcon 9's kerosene, so it's less grimy, even though the exhaust heat does cook it a bit. Despite the dings and scuffs, the internal structure of Booster 12 held up well. Plus, SpaceX even got the chance to check out the engines, noting some warped nozzles from re-entry. With so many boosters piling up, SpaceX could face the same booster overflow it did with Falcon 9, needing to find storage space. And that's not a bad problem to have. And remember, Booster 12's hot stage ring ended up taking a dive into the water, about 9 kilometers off the coast. So SpaceX went fishing, using the same vessel they used for Booster 11's recovery. They headed out to the splashdown site, lifted something onto the crane, but the visuals were murky. Here's hoping they bring it back to Brownsville so we can get a closer look at the newest addition to SpaceX's collection of Booster souvenirs. With Booster 12 out of the way, SpaceX wasted no time resuming work on the launch mount. Their platform, aptly called the Dance Floor, was back in action with scaffolding and alignment pins all getting reinstalled. These alignment pins are key. They help guide the booster safely into place and keep those 20 hold-down clamps right on target. Oh, and let's not forget the chopsticks. With Booster 12 out of their grasp, SpaceX's team got down to some post-flight maintenance. You could see the marks of that booster landing a few scratches here and there, but these chopsticks are good to go for another catch. Meanwhile, work at Pad B is well underway. SpaceX rolled out two new subcoolers specifically for it, meaning they're setting up an independent fueling system for the second pad. Uh, they're also installing protective plates on the tower to support the chopsticks cable tray. 
We're getting closer to Pad B, having its own set of gear and infrastructure to support back-to-back -back launches. Back at the production site, new booster sections were spotted, probably for Booster 16, which could eventually take on the ninth Starship flight. And check this out. SpaceX is now stacking Ship 34, the second next-gen Starship. They're even using a new four-point lifter, which makes the whole process smoother and safer than before. And speaking of version 2 ships, we also saw ship 33 in Mega Bay 2, fully stacked. Seeing a completed Block 2 ship ready for cryogenic proof tests is a thrill for all of us Starship fans. With SpaceX building another four-point lifter, it looks like they're getting ready to lift ship 33 for its turn at the Massey Outpost. Imagine soon a fully completed Block 2 ship undergoing its tests. Now the big question on everyone's mind, when is Flight 6 happening? Here's the lowdown. The FAA license from Flight 5 covers Flight 6, but there's a catch. The license allows for a similar flight profile, but not necessarily an identical one. If SpaceX decides to tweak the flight profile, they might need to get new approvals. So, fingers crossed, we won't have to play the waiting game with the FAA again. There's been talk about whether SpaceX might skip straight to version 2 for Flight 6, but don't count on it just yet. Ship 31 is still prepped for that launch, and teams are working on heat shield improvements as we speak. In fact, they're installing a new ablative layer under the tiles, which is a bit different from the previous ships. It's looking like there's still at least a month of work left on Ship 31, Pad A repairs, and Booster 13's engine tests before we get that next flight. So, will Flight 6 be before the end of 2024? It's possible, but the clock is ticking. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And with that, we wrap up this Starbase update. As always, keep your eyes on the sky, and remember, stay excellent to each other. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash subscribe for more jaw-dropping space updates, and join us as we embark on a cosmic journey like never before.